Hi everyone, so today's video is um, start to finish of my cheetah portrait that I've recently finished. Um, this is a 10 by 18 so it's, you know, it's a nice size to work on. I wanted something longer rather than, than taller, purely based on um, how I designed this layout. So I always do the backgrounds in any of my portraits as you've seen. And with something like this I start off with my lighter colours first and that's purely because I want to keep the lighter colours preserved. So I'll then build layers on top of that, adding colour and as you can see here I'm blending out with my soft tool and then I'll use my finger in some places to, to soften it out even more. Um, and then with each layer I'm adding a darker colour, whether or not that's a slightly green um, colour or a brown, so some oranges in here, some warmer, um, some warmer creams and then here I'm going in with a, it's not white, it's almost like a really light cream to add in some highlights to that area as well. So this part of the video I'll add a little um, card in the corner. This is sped up because I've actually done a voiceover just focusing on the eyes on this um, tutorial in the pastel section of my playlists. So um, click that card if you want to have a look at this um, with a voiceover, obviously much slower than it is here. So when I do um, this sort of portrait, especially with anything with spots, I'll always map in where the main spots are first. To apply my base layers here, what I'm doing is, as I've mentioned before, I'm sanding down some soft pastel sticks, the ones I've got are the Rembrandt, and I'm filing down on them some sandpaper, and I'm then using a soft tool, and then blending various colours on the paper um, in front of me, and then applying that directly to my pastel mat with my soft tools. Once I've got my base layers in place, that's when I go back with my pencils as you can see me working here I use a mixture of my Pit Pastel pencils, Derwent, Carbofello and there's also some Karen Diosh in there as well. So once you've got your base layers down the layers on top of that that you want to be adding in are always slightly lighter than the layer before and you can see from how small this area is how in comparison to the you know the size of my pencils is quite a small area so in order to get the detail in the fur direction your pencils have to be really sharp so what I do is I use um, a blade and then I will tend to file down an even sharper point on a bit of fine grit sandpaper and that's how I I get my really fine points on my pastel pencils which enables me to get more detail in this smaller area a piece that I've got planned coming up is going to be of a lion and it's going to be a 10 by 12 size and it's going to be, because it's just going to be the head and part of the mane, I'm going to be able to get a, a nice amount of detail in that so that's going to probably be one of my next wildlife pieces that I'm going to do. So you can see the process is the same, I've applied some um, of the soft pastel base layers and that's where, as I've said before, I've mixed the colours down on my sandpaper and then I've applied them to the pastel mat, blocked in where the main spots are and then what I'm doing here is I'm going over with my pastel pencils to define these base layers even more. I wanted something a little bit more darker, it's quite a shadow over the top of the adult here so um, I wanted to make sure that I captured that so I just went over with my pastel pencils. Now sometimes when you use soft pastel sticks if you fill up the tooth of the paper too quickly then you can't put as easily pastel pencil layers on top unless you use fixatives. So I do use my pencils a lot for base layers. You do burn through your pencils obviously that much quicker because ideally you want to be using soft pastel sticks. But if you're finding that your pastel pencils are just gliding over the top, it's because you put too much pigment down, which is much easier to do when you're using the sticks. When you're working on ears, you want to make sure that you get your base layer dark enough because otherwise it won't show up these lighter highlights, these stray bits of lighter hairs. So you need to make sure you get that dark enough. The base layer needs to be that much darker in order for your lighter colours to show up on top. So obviously because the light source is behind these cheetahs, the, the ears are quite dark. You don't see all the, the, the white highlights in the inside of the ears from those few hairs that you sometimes get. So as I've said before, don't draw details that aren't there, just draw what you see. So what I wanted to do, now that I've got the top of the head and the ears in, I wanted to get this part of the body in just so that I could make sure that I've got my tones and my darker shades in, as dark as I needed. So what I'm using here is, is my soft tools, quite a lot to blend everything out. I'm softening it out then with my finger and then blending again with the 
the pastel pencils themselves. This is all out of focus, this top part of the cheetah. So there was a really nice depth of field effect on, on this, the layouts that I created. So this was created using three, I think three different photos. Um, so I used the, the main position and the photo for the adult, which was obviously, as you can see here, she's laying down. And then I wanted to incorporate a cub in this. So I then found another photo where the cub was lying down and I thought it worked perfectly. So. I used a program to, to design my layout, merge these photos together to create a unique piece so that I know that my artwork is one of a kind. So the, the trick to creating this out of focus effect is a really light hand and don't be tempted to add any details at all. The second you add details to a blurry section such as this back of the cheetah, then it's not, in, it's not out of focus. So now I've got that out of focus area about 80% complete as I say in my other videos. I'm now working back on the adult so I'm going to start adding my layers for the nose, getting in my darkest values first and then working on the muzzle area around it because once you've got your darker tones in first you'll be able to easily judge how bright you need to make your highlights around that darker area. So you'll notice that I get my base layers pretty accurate. I like to make sure that I get my variation in the colour. I never put one solid colour down. It's always making, still making sure that you're following your reference photo really, really accurately. And it does make it easier for when you start working with your pastel pencils. So you've already got a really good foundation and it really good. It already tells you and indicates where the fur direction needs to be so you pay really close attention to your reference photo at all times and there i'm adding i'm mixing some darker layers on top which is absolutely fine to do that um, you obviously just want to make sure that your lighter colors like what i'm doing here um, have got a dark enough base layer to show up and often if you're finding that your lighter colours aren't showing up well, it's, it usually is because your darker base layer underneath isn't dark enough. So here I'm just reinforcing that dark area, making sure I've got the shape of the nose accurate. Really sharp pencils all the way through. And you can see that when I get to this stage, I do sometimes notice, oh, that bit needs tweaking, that bit needs changing. And it's just as you get more of your portrait you know, more the, the further you work along it, you not, might notice an area next to it that needs to be tweaked. So you'll notice that quite often my base layers will completely um, go over my sketch lines that I've got in, but that's absolutely fine because you can freehand things back in afterwards. They're just so that you um, have something to follow, especially if you are just starting out. I tend to find that the better that your sketch lines and the more sketch lines you have in of where the main sets of spots are, you are more likely to make sure that you get the um, the structure right, they follow the, the fur direction that much easier because you're able to then break it down into smaller sections. And the way I tend to work is what you've got to think of is how the fur overlaps. So the bottom part here of the cheetah's chin, I needed to get that shadow in first in order for these chin hairs that I'm doing now to overlap that part of the foreground. So there was no good in you starting off on the chin and then putting your, your the shadow in underneath because then you'd have to go back onto your chin and then add those little hairs. So I always like to think one step ahead and what bit you need to add in, otherwise you're making more work for yourself in the long run. So adding all my lighter shades now. This is obviously quite sped up because this was quite a long project. There was over a few days that I did this. So if there's any part of this project that you want me to slow down and make a focus video on, then please pop it in the comments below. So this process of the cheetah cub's eyes was exactly the same on the adult. And as I said, there is a card in that corner there um, in my pastels playlist in the tutorials one as well where I've got a voiceover explaining what I'm doing and how I tackle eyes like this. So here are the base layers. Now for this one I'm doing something different because I am aware that obviously everybody may not have access to soft pastel sticks so this cheetah the base layers I've done with pencils. I personally like I do prefer working this way um, I do find that the layers on top of pastel pencils go down better 
than the soft pastel sticks now i only have the rembrandt soft pastel sticks because in the new year i am probably going to experiment with a few other different brands but these are the ones there's a, a huge color range that they've got but i do find that i prefer my base layers with the pastel pencils it's just how i i prefer the, the how the pencil then goes on top of those base layers much easier So with a cheetah cub, anything with this type of fur, it needs to be soft. Their fur is, is much fuzzier, almost a bit fluffier. So you want to keep your pencil strokes soft, a really, really light hand. And you don't want anything too sharp. So there is a difference in the fur of the adult compared to the cheetah cub. So that different texture, and it's not texture that you can touch, obviously, it's not all this is obviously very smooth to the touch but it's texture in the the texture of the fur itself so you want to make sure that you replicate that and you capture that in your portrait so as you can see it's just a layering process once you've got your, your base layers in you can then add your details on top And making sure you capture your darker values and your contrast, your lights need to be bright enough and your darks need to be dark enough. That is what will make your portrait that much more realistic, more than colour. If I didn't have my shadows dark enough and the stripes down by their eyes dark enough, the whole portrait would look flat. So by getting these darks in and your lights in, it's going to make your portrait feel that much more 3D. Now I changed the colour from my reference photographs a lot for this. I wanted it to have a lot more warmer colours. I changed the background so that there was far more warmer oranges, yellows, that subtle bit of nice brighter green. So I wanted those warmer tones to come out in the fur. So although I'm following my reference photograph really closely in terms of the fur direction, I am using a completely different colour range compared to what is in my reference photo. So you can see just how small this area is compared to the point of my pencil so it's really small area but I can still get enough detail because I'm working with really sharp pencils now it can be quite tedious because pastel pencils you know they're known for breaking they don't keep points very easily especially when you're working on a paper like pastel mat where it has got that um, it's not a gritty but it's, it's definitely more of a textured surface so as long as you keep rotating your pencils round they'll automatically keep sharpening that point themselves so this part of the foreground was challenging. You'll see, this is why I did not edit this part of the video out. I started working on this foreground and I didn't like the, the effect. The, I did not like it at all. Um, this part of the, the wasn't so bad, but you'll see when I get to the corner here on the left-hand side, I started adding some something that I did in my layout, which I thought would look nice. And I thought it just completely distracted from the subjects themselves. So I scrapped that and you'll see how I rectified this. All this grass, I just it drew my eye to the corner rather than the eyes and this the two main subjects in the middle. I didn't like it. So I literally applied pastel straight over the top, used my finger and some tools to blend it out. And then I created like a vignette effect. So I wanted the, the corners to be darker and that would help to draw your eye into the middle of the portrait even more. So this is what I talk about when I mention in my other videos about it's absolutely fine to make mistakes. That wasn't really a mistake. It was something that I wanted to try and I really didn't like it. Pastels on pastel mat is really forgiving. So I wanted therefore a much more simpler foreground because I did not want anything to draw my attention away from this mother and her cub. So you'll see that I, I break this foreground in there are bits of grasses there's nice little bits of stones but it is it is plain in comparison to the detail on the cheetahs and that was deliberate another thing is this is the adults the mother's tail so this is going to be completely out of focus to the point where it almost blends in with the background and that is exactly how i wanted it i did not want this to draw attention away from just like the foreground away from the adult and the cub so this get your basic shapes in and then towards the end I completely rubbed it out completely blurred it out to push that tail right further back on the portrait 
So even more than you can see now, I then, towards the end of the video, bl blended it out even more. So here I'm just reinforcing my darks, making sure that I've got that shadow accurate. And this is all because I'm working with various photographs. You have to make sure that the layout is balanced. If I didn't create a shadow on the side of the cheetah's leg, even though it's not there in the reference photo, it would not look right. The mother is blocking out some of the light and where the arm is forward, it's going to create that shadow underneath. So even if it's not in your reference photo, when you're combining multiple references, like how I've done for this, you have to make sure that each element works together as a whole. And whenever I do any wildlife pieces, 99% of the time I will design my own layouts exactly like what I've done here, purely so that I know that my artwork is completely one of a kind. It is unique. There isn't, you know, anybody can, you can copy a photograph exactly and that is absolutely fine to do that. I do, I do, I do often do that, but sometimes creating something unique i th i just i get far more satisfaction from it knowing that it's completely unique to me i've designed that right from the start now, all these re reference photos that i did use for this came from wildlife reference photos i purchased each individual one and then created something from that so that's always something to bear in mind obviously you've got to be really you know, copyright is very set very very serious so i purchased all my photographs from there they're an excellent website the photographs are excellent quality and the the range in subjects you, you wouldn't want for any more so i would definitely recommend heading over there if you want any wildlife references so this process is the same as I've mentioned before, getting your nice base layers in first and don't rush these base layers. I think these layers are really, really important. They block in where your main colours are. And as I've said so many times, don't just use one colour. Really pay, pay close attention to your reference photo because as you can see here, I'm only using a few colours for my highlights on top, but you can still see the variation in the base layers underneath. So it automatically makes your job easier because those layers underneath, those base layers that you've spent that extra time getting more accurate, show through. And then I start blocking in where my darks are again, my main sets of spots. And with spots, now I can make a focus video on this if you want me to, so you, again, pop suggestions in the comments below, but with spots, you've got your darker area in the middle, you've then got a transition colour before it hits the highlight on the very edge of that next spot. And it, they all tend to overlap. So pay really close attention to that. Don't just draw solid black where the spot is and then the fur direction straight next to it because that is not how the spots are. Same with stripes. There is always a transition colour after the black and then before the, the start of the spot, that's where the detail in the fur direction overlaps the black area. So here I start adding the foreground in for here as well, just so that as I mentioned before, I can start overlapping this part of the neck and the leg fur over the foreground. You don't want to be spending all that time adding that detail in to then have to go over it blocking in the foreground. So this is the most cost effective way to work, most, most for your time anyway. So this part of the adult was catching a nice amount of light so there's some really nice warm tones here lots of i don't tend to use yellow for the fur but lots of creams some oranges and depending on how you layer them the different pencils you will get a slightly different result so it's all a bit of trial and error but i just the karen Diosh, um pencils for this worked really really well the colors are lovely and here is, it's quite bright so this is the brightest part of the portrait because it is catching that much more light where the, the direction of that light is bouncing off the top of the adult's body here working slightly off camera I do apologize about that I do change the camera in a minute and all I'm doing here is I am just softening everything out and making sure that although it's out of focus I haven't lost you know I still spend the same amount of time needed on this out of focus section as I did everything else reinforcing some of the darker spots there and then I've gone back here and I'm now adding some of that details to the foreground as I mentioned nothing in particular just a few odd stones a little bit of pebble and some dirt there I wanted to keep this really really simple at the front 
So I hope this tutorial helped. I know obviously it was sped up quite a bit because it was quite a long portrait over a few days. So if there's any aspects of this portrait you want me to make focus videos on, then please pop suggestions in the comments below. Now I do just want to mention, because I know I get a few messages about what happens if you make mistakes and that sort of thing. So I just want to point out, below where the adult's tail is, the bit that I put out of focus, in the drawing process, when you go back and watch the video, if you scroll back, you can see that I did the ground all the way up to where the, the tail curves up. That is absolutely not right. It wasn't until I did that thing which I've often recommended where I photograph the artwork at the end and have a look at it on my phone that I realised that, that did not look right. By me continuing dark brown all the way up to the curve of the tail, I made it look like the ground, like they were on a hill. But they're both flat in the portrait and that did not look right from the perspective or anything. And as soon as I photographed it, I noticed it straight away. So if that happens, what do you do? Absolutely no big deal. Um, all I did is I took some soft pastel sticks because they, they are obviously that much more pigmented so they'll show up that much better. And I took the same colour that's in my background and I went over the dark area in that foreground. And as soon as I made that change, I was far happy with it and I knew then that the portrait was finished. So I just wanted to point that out because it's absolutely fine to make mistakes. We all do it and you learn for those mistakes and as soon as you fix it, it's then information that you've got and you've learned from for your next portrait. Thank you for watching. I hope the video was of use. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe and hit the bell button if you want to get notified of new content. Um, Saturday's video is probably going to be in acrylics because I've now done a couple in pastels so that will probably be of um, a really nice spaniel that I completed for a Christmas commission. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!